Now, time to take another look at the morning papers. Here with me reviewing them today are the broadcaster, Esther Craycu, and the community editor and columnist at The National, Shona Craven. So, welcome back to both of you. you. And uh, actually, we're kicking off with floods, aren't we, um, yeah. Esther? Because um, it, a number of the front pages have photographs of people's communities mm -hmm. devastated sometimes f not the first time yeah. by flood water um, and here's the inside spread in the express and their take on it yeah so this is one of the wettest uh, january's on record and uh, obviously the floods have completely devastated so many um, communities i mean nottinghamshire has been a county that's been particularly um, hit hardest by this um, with hundreds of properties uh, near the river trent um, the bank of the river trent um, being flooded in east london over 50 people um, have had had to be evacuated after um, <clears throat> a canal burst its banks in, in Hackney. Um, one of the, obviously, criticisms of the government is the fact that the flood defences currently are not fit for purpose, and that's something that Keir Starmer has said, that, you know, if he should win the next general election, that's something that he would um, tackle. But obviously, um, the floods minister is saying that Funding is not the issue. Um, the government has doubled, apparently, funding um, <clears throat> to go to flood defences of over £5.2 billion. Um, so this is obviously a, a conversation of why does this keep happening? Um, every time there's some sort of extreme weather event, um, the country's infrastructure just can't seem to keep up. I mean, last summer we had a very hot summer on record and you literally had uh, tarmac at Luton Airport melting. Um, so the question is, what is what is it with this country that doesn't seem to function um, during extreme weather events? And this is a prime example. I mean, you've literally seen people on, on basically kayaks rowing in, in the neighbourhoods. Um, homes have been flooded. Um, bins aren't being collected as a result. There's, there's obviously the question, question of hygiene and, and rat infestation. Um, and so this is this is a very serious uh, event. Well, yes, and, it, and it's not like you get flooded one day and you're okay the next when it stops yeah. raining. I mean, this is something that could go on for months and even longer, um, the, the impact that's felt. So there are questions each time there's a flood about whether we can do more to build up our flood defences. Do you feel that those questions are being addressed? Well, I mean, with this caveat of how much money can there be, but, you know, as Esther says, you know, we've got these extremes of temperature. It's not like we're planning for one particular event. I mean, the map that the Daily Express has of all these flags of flooding in England and Wales is, is pretty shocking. How do you target your resources when it's large parts of a country that are affected? There's a really... Uh, uh, impactful statement from a professor of hydrology saying storm after storm this autumn and winter has made Britain a sopping wet sponge and there is nowhere for any extra rain to go and so faced with that I mean no amount of money can resolve this once it's happened but the prevention questions I think will you know, possibly feed into some of the discussions in this election year. Yeah, exactly. It will certainly be on uh, the voters in those areas' minds, won't it? Um, anyone who's been affected will want to get answers, I'm sure. So it's interesting to see what the political parties might say in the run-up to an election. In the meantime, though, take us on to a different subject here, um, Shona, because the front page of The Times focuses on the post office and this whole Horizon scandal whereby sub-postmasters lost money, were prosecuted, some went to prison, over an IT system that didn't work, they were blamed. Um, the story moves on. Tell us what the time says. Yeah, so the headline is Post Office Faces Police Inquiry Over IT Scandal. And I think anyone who's followed this on any level will think, well, I should blooming well hope so in about time how can it possibly have taken this long so the Metropolitan Police say um, their detectives are looking at potential fraud offences and this is committed between 1999 and 2015 so I mean I can't understand at all how it can have taken this long um, it's not clear exactly if, if it's the post office as a whole as a corporate entity that's been investigated or individuals but there are individuals who absolutely categorically knew that this wasn't a case of hundreds of previously honest people suddenly starting to dip into tills. It certainly should have raised suspicions. <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah, Even and, and there were so many people in the same situation. Yeah, and people affected have said they were <clears throat> gaslit. They were repeatedly told, "No, it's not. We've not had any other problems from anyone else." So individual people, I think, without doubt, you know, gave those assurances or made those accusations knowing that something was up um, at some stage. So I really hope people will um, get you know, satisfaction from some kind of additional, you know, criminal investigation. What struck me in this piece, and um, this has been in the spotlight due to an ITV drama, um, 
called Mr. Bates versus the Post Office. And so there will be people who are learning about this for the first time and be completely staggered that innocent people were not only required to pay this money out of their own pocket, which I think would really surprise a lot of Bank people, but then put in, people, put in prison. Yeah, bankrupted, and people went to prison, people took their own lives following this. <coughs> but what's interesting to me, it says 50 new potential victims contacted lawyers after this ITV drama was broadcast, including five who wished to appeal against a conviction. I'm kind of amazed there's still people who haven't yet come forward, but then the trauma of that experience actually may have meant that some of them couldn't even, you know, read the news stories that have come before now. And some people still haven't got compensation for yeah. it. They're still out of pocket after yeah. all these years. And we're talking, you know, nearly 20 Some people have died waiting for, for, yeah. for, for this yeah. to, to be remedied. I suspect one of the main issues w would have been the institutional, um, lack of institutional integrity. So even if you suspected that something, there was a glitch in the software, you know, how do you get up get it up the hierarchy chain to actually address it? Would, would there have been enough uh, public resources to actually try and address this. I think people knew, well, this, this issue became known well before, you know, 2015 when this whole scandal um, <clears throat> officially ended um, but I don't think they, they either had the resources or they could talk to people or they just didn't want to actually have to face the public shame of, of this event Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very big issue and uh, there is a public inquiry going on isn't there so we yeah. may well hear um, more on, on different levels um, over the weeks and months ahead. Uh, in the meantime though we are out of time already uh, but we, we'll be back again in the next hour, lots more to talk about then uh, for the moment though, uh, Shona and Esther thanks very much indeed